8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. The voyages of two German ships which left Veracruz last week to run for home came to an end today. A temporary end in one case, a permanent end in another. The 32,000-ton liner Columbus, overtaken by a British destroyer three or four hundred miles east of the mouth of Delaware Bay, was scuttled and set on fire by her own crew to escape capture. The American cruiser Tuscaloosa, on neutrality patrol, picked up 579 of the 630 men on board and will bring them in tomorrow to Ellis Island, New York. Whether any of them were picked up by the British destroyer is not known. The Navy's last report at 825 said that the Columbus was afire and slowly sinking, but that so far as could be learned, all on board had been saved. This incident appears to have occurred just outside the 300-mile safety zone proclaimed by the American republics at the Panama Conference, which has never been recognized by any of the belligerents. The Navy Department says, however, that, quote, so far as we know, no unneutral action has taken place, end quote, which apparently means no fighting. There is no indication as yet that the Columbus was armed. If she had been, she would hardly have been scuttled to escape a destroyer. And the German legation in Mexico City says that she was not carrying cargo or fuel in excess of her own needs. That is, not acting as a supply ship for a German war vessel. In that case, her crew will presumably have the same freedom as any other merchant seaman in a neutral country. The other incident will be a much more pointed test of the whole doctrine of the safety zone. The German freighter Arauca of 5,000 tons was overtaken by the British cruiser Orion off Fort Lauderdale, Florida. When the cruiser fired a shot across her bow, she ran for shelter and managed to get safely into Port Everglades. Captain Friedrich Stengler of the Arauca says that he was just inside the three-mile limit when the shot was fired by the Orion. This is a matter not easy to determine, but at any rate, he was a long way inside the 300-mile limit. In the case of the naval action off Uruguay, the Admiral Graf Schwey had herself sunk a British merchantman and attacked a French ship not far from the south of the Amer- from the South American coast. So the action of the Allies in attacking her seems to have been necessary to protect their own shipping. But if belligerent merchantmen can be attacked within sight of Florida beaches, we might as well give up the whole idea of the 300-mile safety zone. Unless the Orion really fired at the Arauca within the three-mile limit, however, her action was quite legal under generally accepted international law. The 300-mile safety zone was something extra which we tried to add to international law. It looks like a good idea if we can make it stick. The Arauca has, of course, the same right to the shelter of a neutral port as any other merchant vessel of a belligerent such as the Queen Mary or the Normandy. Officials in Washington have held that an armed merchantman may use American ports if her armament is clearly defensive. That is to say, a gun or two on the stern, which wouldn't make her of much use as a raider. But the deputy collector of customs at Fort Lauderdale says that the Arauca is not armed at all, so there seems to be no ground for early reports that she might be interned. As for the crew of the Admiral Graf Spey, the Argentine government today ordered the internment of Captain Longsdorf and approximately a thousand of his men who landed on Argentine soil. The officers will be asked to give their parole not to leave the city limits of Buenos Aires without permission. The men will be dispersed inland and forbidden to visit the coast. Otherwise, they will have pretty complete liberty, and dispatches from Buenos Aires say they are enjoying it. Nothing much happened in the Finnish war today except a series of Russian air raids on Helsinki, Vipuri, and other coastal cities in which the Finns say no damage was done. These were all carried out by small groups, and the great masses of the Russian air force have so far not shown themselves in action. Finnish airmen raided Russian bases and supply columns behind the lines, and the Russians were evidently impressed, for Moscow had its first blackout tonight. The Russian advance in the north, where mechanized columns drove forward many miles yesterday and the day before, has halted for the time. But reports from the Norwegian frontier above the Arctic Circle say that 10 or 12,000 men with 200 tanks are getting ready for an attack on the Finnish positions at Ivalo. The Finns are reported to have told the Allied Supreme War Council meeting in Paris that they had strong hope of holding off the Russians all winter if they could get more airplanes, anti-aircraft guns, anti-tank guns, and field artillery. Dispatches from Denmark report that the British Air Force made three attacks on the German island of Silt near the Danish coast, but the British have no news about it. According to German stories, yesterday's air battle was the biggest air fight in history. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 